Once you start using Planet Scale, it's pretty natural to wonder how this all ties up to production deployments. In the traditional sense, where we're using Prisma and we've got migration files, it's all pretty straightforward. We put our migration files up into our repository, that gets deployed in our production environment. The migrations will run on our production server, which updates our production database, and then after that succeeds, our code gets deployed. And if anything with the migration fails, then our new code isn't going to deploy, so we're all good. But there's kind of a two step process here like we saw. When we get onto the develop branch and we make changes, we do npx prisma db push. Then we go to planet scale. We did so in the dashboard in this course. We could do so through the CLI as well. We merge the deploy request to get the schema changes to take effect. And that's all independent of any code changes that go in. And when I say code changes, I mean, what about when we need to update our code in the production environment to handle Prisma client changes so that Prisma client can do things like handle our new models. At the time of this recording, the best way to do this is kind of still being figured out between Prisma and planet scale. But the recommendation for now looks a little bit like this. What we would do is we would make our changes and we would push them up. We would then merge those changes in on the planet scale side. We would merge our changes into the main branch. And after that's done, we would deploy our new code to production. So it would indeed be two separate steps. First step is we get our database to be shaped up correctly. And the second step is we put our new code into production. So this does beg the question, what happens if we've got breaking changes? What happens if something in our database schema is not going to align with the code that will still be lingering in our production application when those schema changes take effect? And the best answer for that right now is to kind of be forward looking and backwards compatible in our database schema changes. And to do that, we might use something like the expand and contract pattern. An example of this would be, let's say our customer contact model needs to be changed. Maybe we've got first name and last name, but we want to move to just use name instead. This name should be a string. And what we effectively want to do is get rid of these two fields. We want to move the data from first name and last name, put it together to equal name, and they get rid of those two fields. Well, in this scenario, we wouldn't want to immediately delete these two fields because then we would be stuck in a spot where our database model does not align with the code that is in production, at least for a little bit as we're deploying our changes. Instead, we'd keep these two fields around for a while. We would deploy the changes to include this new field of name. Then once that's all done, we deploy our app code so that it uses this new field instead of referencing these two fields. And only at some later time when we're satisfied that these two fields are no longer being used anywhere in any app code, would we then come and delete them and do another deploy request. So that's called the expand and contract pattern. We expand first by including name, and then we contract later by removing these two fields that don't need to be there anymore. So this is a good pattern to follow if we are using planet scale. Again, we kind of want to be forward looking, backwards compatible. There might be something that comes along between Prisma and Planet Scale that makes for an easier time working between the two and synchronizing deployments. But for now, this is sort of our best bet.